you and I were yeah, both into it. <laughs> this is a total banger. Total banger. Um, I like me some EDM for sure. Neat Nation. Uh, hope you guys <laughs> dig. I also, you know what I also love? I love our new podcast theme song, um, which, you know, it's still debatable whether or not that will be our long-term theme song. It depends on whether or not somebody raises a stink because we used it inappropriately, but um, we don't think we used it inappropriately. Uh, it, that's up to you, though. I fault you if, if we're doing something wrong, Brian. Oh, snap. Why would I be, why would we be doing something wrong? Well, not wrong. But uh, borderline, I mean, you know, it's a royalty free tune, and no, man, so we, we know I, it's fine as long as the podcast isn't being sponsored by anybody. I've but I'm credited in the way that credit is needed to be credited. Okay, well, that, I did if see it out there, on there. If anyone out there that. drinks whiskey and writes dank jams and wants to submit another tune, feel free to submit. I mean, we got a dank one right now, but yeah, we'll, we'll entertain. Yeah, it's true, especially if it comes from a uh, whiskey whiskey geek for sure. We dude, we got a thumbs down on the line. We just started. <laughs> Somebody's having oh, a wow. bad day. You know, it may have been. So thankfully, we got uh, my boy uh, Tom Tom Lynch up in the up in the chat playing the wrench for us. Tom, thank you for that, pal. You're a hero. Um, and so we may just be getting uh, spammed already because that's a thing that happens. Edward Fulmer says smoke dank. Now we use, we mean dank um, completely unrelated to weed. Um, that may not be people's general uh, use of dank, but it is ours. So if you're in the chat, welcome. I think we have 52 people hanging out with us right now. Brian and I were just getting our palates ready, doing some pre-show sipping. Tonight, uh, we are going to bottle pop. Well, I am. Brian has had a bottle of this already, so he will provide commentary uh, while well, we bottle pop the early times bottled in bond and just given the hype around this, everybody seems to love it. I'm excited to taste it for myself, judge for myself. Um, we are also continuing to try and level up our equipment game. Uh, you guys can see clearly that Brian looks, he looks good tonight. Um, Brian has got his DSLR all set up and pro Am lighting. I still doing okay? Cause if I look at my screen, I am not. Yeah, moving. you're very frozen. <laughs> yeah. Um, if yeah. I look on the if I look on the channel though, um, I seem to be still going. So I think it might just be a streamyard grab. No, I mean it's a uh, no. You're definitely frozen on the channel too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You may need to just cut out and then cut back in. <laughs> so weird. Yeah, I'm gonna remove well, you and then we'll we'll, we'll 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 go. Well, yeah, we'll give it one more try. Yeah. All right. Sorry, squad, but. I mean, he'll figure it out. Uh, we're going to upgrade our mics here for the podcast. That's the plan, at least in the short term, uh, and continue to just try and invest in creating some really, really rad content. The response to my vids, the Droopy Whiskey vids, continues to be pretty banger. Uh, this week's video was What's the Deal with Buffalo Trace? Complete brand history, which granted, not a very long brand history when it comes to Buffalo Trace. Started in 2000. But, you know, hey, if you don't know everything about Buffalo Trace, check out that video and you you can. Um, I did also a side-by-side -side tasting with Eagle Rare uh, and it was delicious. Eagle Rare is my preference. But if you guys want, you haven't already, you should check out that video from Monday. The response has been, again, pretty solid, very similar to my What's the Deal with Blanton's video. I really like doing those What's the Deal videos where it's very brand centric like let's break down this whiskey let's talk about why it's important what's the hype if there is hype around it what's the history behind the brand and is the whiskey any good what does it taste like very simple concept but hopefully goes a little bit deeper than a standard review and i'm not as technical or caught up in like the breaking down the absolute the tiniest details in the the tasting notes brian and i'll do that sometimes on these live streams or sometimes on the podcast, but my videos are meant to be more like educational, informative, stuff like that. Um, Brian is now completely gone. <laughs> I'm sure he'll come back. But we've got plenty of agenda, even if Brian struggles with the, the technical difficulties. I mentioned hitting that early at times. I've got five craft whiskeys here at least. Maybe we'll get into six. Uh, Brian's back. I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> the new. 
it'll be it'll, if you freeze again we'll just play a game of ping pong tonight and just kick you off and then kick you back on i'll just switch back to the same thing i've been using the weeks previous mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh so if you're in the stream and you guys want to hit us up in the chat tonight's just about hanging out so we're not recording for the pod uh so there's very low pressure which i mean is kind of whatever i don't know if that's good or bad but um so news a piece of news you know, we'll, we'll, we, I mean, it's podcast news. There's a new episode on the podcast. So entryproofpodcast.com. Link is in the show notes below. We now have two deuce, dropping a deuce episodes up. First one. Not um, dropping a deuce. We do have two episodes. Yeah. Well, well we've dropped two. <laughs> we've dropped the deuce. Um, first one was uh, Danny Calloway, Bardstown Bourbon Company. Which little mic trouble on that one, but it's still audible and uh, was awesome. The content was awesome, and the second episode was Brian and I breaking down Four Roses, uh, kind of a what's the deal with Four Roses, but specifically focused on their single barrels and limited editions. And man, I mean, if you guys watch my vids, you know how much I love Four Roses. Should check that out. I listened to that again today, and it was it was good. Really enjoyed it. If you guys want to join in the chat today, uh, just make sure you at me at Drew P Whiskey, or you can at uh, Brian. Brian, what's your login on YouTube so people can see? Uh, it's my name is Brian with I Z as is. I should probably change that. I've had a YouTube channel for fourteen years, <laughs> so um, yeah, you should probably throw. Of, there used to be ahead. a lot of music videos, and it's progressed to like guitar pedal demos and then live show clips and demo recordings and then other just random videos and here pretty soon it'll uh i maybe i'll just hide all those and put up whiskey videos yeah can you do yeah just change that url or that handle to abandon bourbon that's right Ed Ed Fulmer's in the chat. He says, "Droopy whiskey." I kicked off 2020 with about three bottles to damn up to 95. Thanks to all you Ooh. whiskey tubers for giving me FOMO. Uh, I hope you have good credit, and <laughs> or or you know you're just sitting on some cash, or maybe you sold a boat or something. But welcome, welcome to the squad. I am probably around 95 bottles right now, and it took me a long time. To build up that i mean i stayed at 40 for quite some time i kind of held it around 40 for years until the channel started to gain gain some momentum and then uh i'm taking a break now well i was taking a break after the kentucky trip which you can go watch everything i bought in kentucky that was fun um after that trip i was like okay i'm gonna slow down but then whiskey news for the week and brian you can share some whiskey news but I was just hanging at home. My wife went out to the grocery store one evening and I'm scrolling on my phone and I see a liquor store nearby, Timers in Racine. I've mentioned them a few times. They're like, hey, new barrel pick is in, Eagle Rare, limit two per person. And I'm like, this is gonna sell out. It's like eight o'clock, they close at nine. Wife gets home and I run out the door and there was like two cases left. They, I think they had posted on their Facebook page at six o'clock that they had this barrel two per person. And when I get there, there's like this couple walking out with four. I'm like, gosh, good grief. <laughs> I should have brought my wife and my kids and just taken That's the right. last two cases. <laughs> but anyway, I was happy to get uh, my two bottles. Uh, definitely frequent timers when I can. And Eagle rear picks are some of my favorite things. So uh, that is what I bought this week. And now I got to try and convince myself to go the next couple of weeks without buying anything else. But right. who knows what I'll see on Facebook between now and then. Coming off of um, a couple of weeks ago recording, I was able to snag here in Louisville, ye nice. old Jack Barrel Proof Rye. So um, 133.4 proof. And uh, I was telling you that the week after you came into town, some of my friends were, were gathering up some bottles and doing like a best of 2020 tasting. Um, and since this release technically did come out last year, I guess someone brought uh, another bottle and then this one. And several of the guys said that it was within like the top couple of bottles that they had gotten to try. So cool. I, have not, I have not popped it yet. Uh, I am really looking forward to it. I, the, like I said, my buddy said that it's uh, 
It is an incredible one. The guy who got the sample gave the sample to me that I tasted on air that I really enjoyed. He tried and he's like, dude, this other one though is just hmm. really so Sweet. stoked. Stoked. Yeah, I I want to I I want to try that. I mean, I'm thankful I've been able I'm to try to the find sample. One. You know that. Yeah. Trying well, it's, it's fine. I mean, obviously, I have enough whiskey. I need to pop these mixers rise up behind me. Um, this week that would is when they kind of hit around here, so it's oh yeah. the jacks or just the time, yeah, just time to start hit, looking around. Yeah, I don't think they ever more went to stores in. today. Uh, so somebody commented that my mic was rubbing up against my shirt. So I've gone to the full zip, the Bubba, Bubba Watson style full zip. So if you still get rubs, if it still rubs, I will just take my shirt off. I have one underneath it. Um, yeah. Tom's asking about, um, doing a head to head with a JD in Alberta. I could do that. I have a MGP whistle pig. I've got an Alberta whistle pig. That's really tasty. And then I can throw the Jack in there as well. So, do you have the knob cast strength, Ray? Because we get, I've got the Alberta as well, so I can pop that. Yeah, we should just do a Ray, Ray night. Yeah. Uh, the uh, it's bourbon night, folks. They they're using die hard puns for their like Rye month. It's like Rye hard, Rye hard with a vengeance. Pretty pretty awesome. So, uh, Rye puns are pretty good. You can you can play with those. Freddie says, got new riff, bottled in bond, and single barrel Woodford Master Collection. Very fine, rare, along with Pursuit United, which I popped tonight. Uh, I heard, I've heard good things about that Pursuit United release. Yeah, I, passed it, I passed it up. When, I mean, I saw it on the shelf when I was in Kentucky. But, you know, there is a pretty decent chance we're going to have Ryan on our podcast. I'm announcing that now to put pressure on him. But he already agreed to be on the Entry yeah, Proof I mean, it's podcast. Yeah, definitely so. going to happen. Ryan Cecil from Pursuit Spirits and the Bourbon Pursuit podcast will be jumping on with us. Uh, and we will hopefully be able to record that sucker live for you guys, too. That would be fun. And, of course, we will taste uh, Pursuit United on that because it only makes sense. And speaking of that. New Riff. Oh, yeah. Well, you guys know Brian lives in Kentucky, and he's friends with a lot of people. So while I sat here freezing my glutes off. But I haven't shared any photos work. yet. I'll probably start throwing some out. Uh, yeah, tomorrow. that'll be fun. That will. Yeah, you should do that. But what did you do this week, Brian? Uh, I did. I had two picks this week. So I jumped on uh, with a group uh, out of St. Louis. Then they were doing an Ezra Brooks pick. So I drove down there and met them, uh, got into the gift shop. And uh, they're just passing out the passes, getting everything ready for the show, and then asking who all was driving, and then proceeded to tell the people who were driving that they're not allowed to taste the whiskey if they're driving, that they appreciate responsible responsibility and drinking and having designated drivers. So, yeah. well, I do, I do too, but yeah, <laughs> there's a there's a level like you can drink and drive. As long yeah. as you don't drink too much. Like, there's a level. But to just say, like, no, that's frustrating. That's deeply frustrating. I mean, it was neat. The master taster or the master distiller was in there with the tasting, too, and talking about stuff. And I assisted in whichever ways that I could. I did try what they selected afterwards, but didn't really get to do much there. Turned down a starlight pick for that. Uh, but that's okay. And then um, did a new riff pick and uh, for, for two bottles. So two barrels, I should say. You didn't. Um, new, you did you mean to say new riff just now? What did I say, new Lou? No, you said new riff. Did you say you did a new riff pick for two bottles, but you yeah. couldn't taste them? Sorry, I'm confused now. I, it was a, a second pick. So okay. got it. Different day. Right. Okay. No so you longer, spent a lot no, of time at new riff this week. It was a lot of it was a lot of try. So that was at Ezra Brooks. That was at okay, Lux Row. Oh, oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, the, the no tasting Guys, thing is at Lux Row. Got it. Okay. Then you and went then a it. second pick, picking barrels with uh, Blake from R Bourbon, Seal Box. Bourboner. You know, yeah. Bourboner, whatever you want to call it. I'm pretty this, sure he says R Bourbon. I'm like, R Bourbon Reddit, is Reddit. Reddit reference. Yeah, no, he's on the Bourboner Facebook group because it's Bourbon with an R at the end. He got a I'm lot of fat or flack it from Carrie at Suburbia. Who would call it Bourboner, which was is funny. It's a little crass, 
but it got annoying. Uh, he couldn't yeah. let it go. <laughs> Which is fine. I mean, if you're into those kind of jokes. Uh, Archie Taylor hits us with a super chat. Archie, you're the man. Just wanted cheers. to show some support. Drew P, cheers D. Thanks, Doug. Uh, speaking of which, if you guys want to support the Entry Proof podcast slash the Drew P Whiskey channel, you can do that by throwing a super chat down below. Hit that dollar sign. Throw a few bucks on there. We'll for sure read your super chat, get to your question. If you do that, that would be great. Another way, a brand new way that you can support both the channel and the podcast. Because, it, it, you know, if I'm going to go back and forth to Kentucky, it gets a little expensive. Microphones, gets a little expensive. If I want my picture quality to look like Brian's with his dank Fuji DSLR, that gets expensive. <laughs> so, and, you know, so anyway, um, we have started a Patreon. I know, I made fun of it in a video. I did. But it was also like when I had... 50 subscribers. It was one of my first videos. And I said, if you have as many subscribers as mine, as I do, it's kind of foolish to start a Patreon. Feels like you're begging. It's true. Like, I don't want to put pressure on to support. But if you want to support, you want to get access to some bonus content we're going to be releasing, you want to get some swag, you can check us out. Patreon.com slash podcast. That will also be the way, because we're working to try and get access to some barrel picks. We're working to try and find a retailer to partner with. Um, that would be the way that you would be able to get entry-proof podcast barrel picks. We're not guaranteeing maybe them possibly, right now. Maybe possibly even starting as soon as this week, but I don't know. <laughs> we're, we're hoping. We're working on it right now. No guarantees yeah, yet. Cool. But yeah, we will add those two tiers. Um should we get that far? So, um, having a good time. We're doing the work. Uh, and, uh, yeah, a lot of podcasts right now in the pipeline. I think we've recorded five. We've released two. And we've got a few more uh, that we are already planning on recording. That's right. <sighs> Sweet. The, I think I'm getting flack in the chat for getting confused about the new riff. Slash, JD did everybody. chime in. He said he picked up a bottle of uh, Fry Ranch Star, uh, Fry Ranch Straight Bourbon. Have you heard of this? I've not heard of Fry Ranch. Fry, I have not. No, no. It's but like, who knows? Good stuff. I like it. I'll have to. I'm gonna have to look that up after this. Yeah. Um, out of the hundred or so samples that I need, I don't have a hundred samples here right now. But the hundred craft whiskeys I'm working on, who knows? I might get to that. I assume that. That well, I mean, it's obviously not one of the big guys, but yeah, I was gonna say, you know, it's not, it doesn't sound like a mass distilled place for to you. Uh -uh. It does not. And, oh man, there's another one. Edward's chiming in saying Fry Ranch is great. We're missing out, dude. We don't know what this stuff is, and apparently the chat does. How do you pronounce that? Is that Fry or Frey? Yeah, I mean, you think we would, yeah. All right, um, so my palette warmers, guys, before we get into this bottle pop, was uh. Uh, just a smidgen of uh, Pirate Bottle Elijah Craig, which, you know, is one of my favorites. Enjoyed that. And then just a smidgen of Four Roses Single Barrel. So I feel like I've got some bourbon on the palate here, and I am ready to pop the Early Times Bottled in Bond. Let's go. Uh, what'd you warm up with, Brian? Uh, so I just popped a little bit of Henry McKenna, 10-year. As so opposed I, to the brown label, have yeah, you as had? Opposed to the same yeah, have you had the bottom shelf Henry McKenna? I have never had that. I've not I, been I'm sure at some point. I have. I'm sure at some point. I have. And honestly, for a while, I didn't even really like this Henry McKenna. And I I decided to get a bottle, but I wanted to see if someone had one that was barreled on my birth um, day. Not necessarily the exact date, but at least like a a birthday barreling. And so somebody in one of my Cincinnati groups was nice enough to to find one or to have one that I could get, and uh, it's pretty good. It's wow. pretty good. That Got some cool. nice complexity to it. The other night, I was while you're opening, I'll just talk. Yeah, this is uh, impossible. By the way, <laughs> I was I was tasting it alongside of some Eagle. Ray. I, I was, after watching your video, you know, I was tasting through some Buffalo Traces that I had open and some Eagle Rare because. I seem to have a lot of Buffalo Trace picks and I'm like fine going after them, but I never go after Eagle Rare picks. I'm always like Eagle what? Rare is on my profile. So oh my gosh, me, well, get them and send I, them to me. I feel like Eagle Rare is what I would define as that hatred word for bourbon geeks. 
as a smooth bourbon. I feel like I drink it and I don't, I don't know what I tasted. It's just so smooth. And that's off putting a bit to me, but mm. I did try about a year ago, a pick. I don't know if it's local or not. It was the sweet Caroline and it was delicious. And I'm like, Oh, maybe I should start going after Eagle rare picks, but I don't. And for it to have, several more years of age. I don't know why I, I don't do it, but again, yeah. and I, so I tasted the two of those. I was like, Oh, there's definitely a, some more richness. There's like a little bit more sophistication to the Eagle rare, but then I went to the Henry McKenna and I was like, Oh, there's just a little bit more depth here. Well, now it's also that could just come. I was going to say that could come from, well, that's true. It could come from the fact that I've just been leaning a little bit more heaven Hill lately, but man, this yeah. nose is, I just want to sit in the nose. Yeah. The palate's actually a little bit on the spicy side, but the nose is great. So I'm fine just actually sitting with this glass for a bit. Yeah, I've had some killer Henry McKenna bottles for sure. But I mean, I I have not met anybody who's like, oh, I'm not really big on Eagle Rare. It's not my profile. <laughs> I just can't imagine that. Like, as I said in my video, I want 100 proof or 101 proof Eagle Rare. And you told me that T.H. Taylor small batch, which I was like, is it? At some point, I'll do a side by side with E.H. Taylor Small Batch and Eagle Rare, probably sooner rather than later. Um, but it's still like I mean, it's heat cycle. Oh man, did you so get the? Even if it's what five years old, it's still. Oh really? Old. I did not know that. I mean, it's it's E.H. Taylor, so it's in that it's in the warehouse H, right? And that's heat cycled. Or is it heat cycled, steamed? What is it that they do there? I have not been there. So I don't know. All right. Now I feel like an idiot because I'm live, but it they definitely have something <laughs> that keeps. I try and a, speak to what I know. I feel smarter if I'm like, oh, I know that. And if anybody's like, hey, did you hear about this? I'm like, yeah, maybe. I don't think I'm wrong. Someone throw in a super chat if I'm wrong, but also throw in a super <laughs> chat if I'm right. <laughs> oh, you're quite the salesperson. Oh my gosh. All right. We did get a super chat from commenter McComet Face with the Dan Saget, Bob Saget, Bob Saget um, what, uh, profile picture, which is amazing, commenter. I don't know what your name is, but you have a brilliant profile picture. Love the channel. Keep up the good work. What's the best bottled and bond in y'all's opinion? Need some new ones to try. Man, that's so tough. Like, if you want an everyday findable bottled and bond, uh, that's a good question before we bottle pop this let's work on that for a second and then we'll pop the early times but let me see so i mean like henry mckenna if you can get it is really hard to beat um it's tricky because they even have some bottled and bond products that go for a long time like the special release eh taylor's can be bottled and bond yeah the, like the new william Henry. William Heaven Hill is 13 years old. It's also bottled in bonds, but I'm, I'm going to assume that we mean old fits. A, I'm, I'm assuming we're meaning able to purchase right bottled right. in bond products. Um, man, that that old um, Heaven Hill. Yeah, that was, was the tight. best. That best for the value for sure. Um, right now, right now, I personally am enjoying Evan Williams. Them yeah on. yeah I, I go to that one sort of standard I, it's hard for me to be like that's the best one but i'm i'm and it may be just that i'm just utterly blanking right now but i don't know that i could pull one better that you're like you can just go and get it because i'm not a big fan of the beam bonded i'm not a big fan of old granddad bonded Ugh. we're getting chats blowing up right now what do you guys think? what would you say in the chat squad? i mean Hit again it's here. The price point is so different, but you know, if you're if you are into the Buffalo Trace profile, each Taylor small batch. Yeah, but again, that's the, not like I had to get lucky, like showing up at Total Wine at the right and, time to get. And again, bottle. it's like three times the cost of what we're talking yeah. about right now. This early times you're about to pop is a liter. Yeah, what you yeah, that's about? what I've heard. Plus. That's definitely the what I've heard. Is, is great. David Fuston says it's Frey, not Fry from Nevada. They grow their own grains, right. distill their own grains, Sorry, bottle their own whiskey. So yeah, it seems like they're doing some cool stuff. Uh, some people say eighteen old Forester, eighteen ninety seven bottled and bond. I was not impressed with that. Seventeen ninety two bottled and bond, not my favorite either. Uh, Cameron Batko says though isn't the McKenna hype because they won on a honey barrel and so many bottles seem to be duds. Oh dude, no, I've. Sure, they probably won on a honey barrel. So San Francisco Spirit Awards 
probably one world's best bourbon <laughs> because they got a honey barrel. Well, yeah, it's a single barrel product, but at the same time, I've had way more good bottles of Henry McKenna than bad. So like I've had probably one early on in my career, which may have been, a, I maybe just wasn't feeling that profile as much my career, my career in bourbon um, that I didn't like as much. Nowadays, I like them quite a bit. Some are more nutty than others. And I'm not a big fan of that. I like it when it gets more like nougaty or I get, you know, that almond candy uh, note out of, some Henry oh, Tom's actually throwing out a good one. The old, the old Bargetown is a great bottled and bond product. It's very spicy. It's so that's a profile thing for me too. It's that's like a that's, cocktail in a glass for me. So it's Willet. It's certainly better than the Willet Pot Still Rever Reserve, which you Neat Nation knows that that is not my channel. <laughs> I cannot. That's not my thing. Um, but I enjoyed my bottle of. Uh, old Bard Sound bottled and bond, but I didn't buy another one when I was there. So, uh, this is my bourbon podcast. Hey, thanks for joining. Glad you're here. We should connect. Um, the ET is a great choice, but with it being bought by Sazerac, I wouldn't put my clams on it for the near future. We're about to talk about that. Uh, all right, cool. Let's uh, let's pop this. So yes, guys, the early times. Bottled and Bond. This is currently Brown Foreman Juice from the, sh what's that city called? Where is that distillery located? Sh sh Shively. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, thank you. Kentucky guy. That's why you're on the show. <laughs> I need somebody who knows things. Um, so yeah, that's where they make Old Forester. Of course, Brown Foreman is the whiskey conglomerate for American whiskey. We're talking Jack. You know, they own Jack Daniels, they own Old Forester, they own Woodford Reserve, and they owned the Early Times brand, which generally, Early Times as we know it today, is a blended whiskey, bottom shelf, which I've never had. Um, I have not had it. Then in 2017, they released this bottled in bond, hearkening back to what it was, like back in like 1940s, uh, was bottled in bond product. And uh, that was well received. And then it's got distribution in, I think, like 10 states now, this bottled and bond. And what I heard, uh, have been hearing from Nation across the states, is that it's still widely available on the shelves. Yes, the brand was sold to Sazerac. While I've for Brian, give us some hot takes on what you think that means for the early times brand. Yeah, to be honest, uh, I've been wondering that myself, specifically with, um, you know, my my biggest um, attention as it comes to early times is because that's what goes to King of Kentucky. And when it came out in 2018, I was not a huge fan of it. But in 2019, it was 2017 I, when it came out. <laughs> No, uh, it was 18. I fact-checked it this morning, or th this afternoon. King of Kentucky? Mm -mm. Sorry, I thought you were talking about early times. No, 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 no. King no, you're correct. Um, so we're just talking past it, each other. Either yeah. way, either way, early times grows up to become King of Kentucky. And um, I, it turned into one of my favorite pours. And so when I heard of it, at first, my first thought was, what does that mean for the stock? What does that mean for King of Kentucky? Does it, is there enough reserving that it releases? Does it stop? Does, do, does somehow King of Kentucky go over it and become a product of theirs as well? Um, th those are just things I kind of was thinking about. Um, yeah. In terms of I early times in general, I mean, early times it just has a really long history. It's, the brand is still one of the better brands on the market in terms of whiskeys that sell. Um, I would say probably in the top five brands or something like that. Maybe we should I fact check that. <laughs> you should probably. I think it is. I thought it's like the fourth or something like that. But there's a reason we're not recording this for the podcast. <laughs> I don't think I'm wrong all the time. No, no. I mean, you were clearly right about the um, 2018 uh, King of But Kentucky. it is intriguing because it's not a bourbon whiskey, right? It's Kentucky whiskey. Yeah, because it's it's a blend of bourbon and then light whiskey. 
which light whiskey distilled at a higher proof, you know, can be it. Oh, that one has much looser like definitions than bourbon. So, uh, real quick, um, I went to bottle pop this and it was the most depressing bottle pop um, in the history of yeah. our live stream bottle pops. Nothing against screw jobs. They're great for uh, avoiding cork taint, uh, but they are not satisfying when it comes to sound. So uh, take on what this means for King of Kentucky. I think nothing. You know, I do think that in some cases, like you have to be able to supply juice for your core brands and what you want to produce. And it may be that, um, you know, the Shively distillery is just not capable of keeping up with old forester, um, you know, production, necessary production and, and you know, Woodford and, um, and King of Kentucky and whatnot. So they got to get sort of the thing that's just sucking juice from them out from underneath their portfolio. And it's not like early times was sold to Buffalo Trace and now Buffalo Trace has to outfit that brand is that was sold to Sazerac, which, you know, they've got distilleries in Canada. Like, so you might see early times get like changed into just a blended whiskey, not a Kentucky blended whiskey. Um, Sazerac owns 1792 Barton, which that's a workhorse um, distillery. So there's plenty of juice that go ahead. I did start to think that it, it wouldn't be un impossible, even though you said it's not going to be a Buffalo Trace thing. It wouldn't be impossible that it becomes allocated. Oh, like sure. A lot of those products. I'm like, okay, cool. You might want to grab it if you see it, you know, at least a bottle because yeah. we might see the exact same thing happen. We've seen this so many other products. Yeah. I mean, the th the juice will change like it. it here's another thing, though, is um, in the brand acquisition, we don't know this but Sazerac could have acquired some barrel stocks from Brown Foreman. So the juice may not change right away. We may still see early times basically looking exactly as it does right now for a, a little while longer. That said, at right. some point it's going to change. Um, when, who knows, in what form, who knows. But yeah, if you like this and you want to get a case just to make sure you kind of have it for a little while, do that. Don't buy 30 cases. Like This is my only bottle. I could have bought many... I did shuttle some back for friends, but then gave them to friends. So, you know, just moderation, guys. Let's not hoard. Neat Nation doesn't hoard. We collect. We're not against collecting. Let me be clear. Because I got flack in one of my videos. I was like, hey, guys, don't hoard. That's not very nice. And then they're like, what's up with your shelf, bro? And I was like, do you see? Like, They're like one deep <laughs> or two deep at most. So get off my back. All right. This smells quite good. Uh, this is my bourbon podcast. Says got to bounce, but I'll catch up with you guys later. Hey, thanks for joining us. This smells very nice. Um, it's very floral, more than I expected. Very little on the banana, which I appreciate. It does remind me more of uh, Old Forester 1920 in the nostrils. Plenty of, of oak presence for something that's likely just four years old, but heat cycled in all likelihood. We should fact check that. <laughs> we should have a, a drinking game. We should fact check, fact check that. We know fact that. Check. We know that's that's true. So I'm going... So this is really... An, it, I've got a little bit of that Eagle Rare left that I poured while you were talking about Eagle Rare. Side-by-side mm -hmm. -side nosings are helpful. This is uh, uh, more cinnamon and clove spicy. This Eagle Rare is actually very fruity. Um, nectarines and cherries. Uh, whereas this sweetness is accompanied by pretty heavy baking spice and chocolate shavings. Like cocoa. Uh, like decently sweet. Not the sweetest thing ever. Not the not the smoothest thing ever, too. There's some alcohol mm -hmm. presence. Hunter proof, but... Yeah, smells great. Um, there you is like a, you have conflicting opinions on the palate. I do a little bit. I don't hate it, um, and I'm I got to sit with it a minute because there's a the the thing that hit me first, the thing that I recognized or noted first, is it's got kind of a fuzzy, 
That's, that's why I can describe it. Almost chalky mouth feels similar to larceny. Larceny has this kind of funky nuttiness, which is that's weeded. Um, early times is not weeded, not high rye, but not weeded. So the, the, that so chalky peanutty funk, but not bean peanut. Yeah. That hit me first. So I'll, I'll continue to explore this. You're welcome to share your thoughts. Yeah, I was I was just wondering if you're gonna go into the banana right away. I mean, it's not Woodford level banana. Um, yeah, it's really I mean, it's pretty spicy. Um, not herbaceous at all. It's almost all baking spices, so we're not talking the dill family over here. Um, and the rye isn't very no noticeable, but the baking spices are very, very pronounced. And the banana is probably there, but more subtle. <sighs> yeah, I mean, it's okay. <laughs> um, and it may be a profile I'm thing. I'm a big fan of that pocket of flavor. So Woodford, Woodford Double Oaked, mm. uh, Old Forester, and then the the early times when we, we got a liter of that and it did not last very long just because mm. I kind of gets into my wife's wheelhouse. I could take it or leave it. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's pretty sweet. It does have quite uh, quite a long finish on it. Um, very like full flavored. And I think it, I would take it over Woodford because Woodford is just a little bit kind of tart for me, which I don't really, really like that so much. Um, yeah, it's, it is everything I would expect a $26 bottled in bond to be. Uh, <coughs> what would be interesting, I'd like to do this, but I don't have it, is to taste it alongside the Old Forester bottled in bond and see, given these two bottled in bond products, how much variation is there, difference between the flavor profiles. Um, but yeah, you know, I guess I would, so going in, here's the downside is hype is a murderer of joy. Um, if I just picked this off the shelf as a $26 liter bottled in bond, and then I was like, okay, yeah, that's pretty good. Pretty good bourbon, 26 bucks. That's a good value. Nothing to hate about that. But if I'm going, oh, people are saying, Oh, this early times bottled in bond. It's one of the best bottled in bonds. So good. You got to try it. So good. So good. So good. And then you try it and you're like, is, I mean, it's, it's good, but <laughs> is it the hype worthy? It's good. That's all I have to say about that. Sorry, squad. I mean, you got my tasting notes. You. So generally positive tasting notes. Um, I maybe get a little bit of like a youthful graininess. Um, when I first tasted it, but I was coming off of Eagle Rare. Um, so that is also probably not a fair comparison. What were you going to say, Brian? No, I was telling you before the show, I could try and pull up my phone and show Nation as well, like I showed you. But um, I screenshot it. I can try and bring that screenshot up. Yeah, either that or, like I said, I can I can scroll and try and pull it up. Yes, yesterday. Yesterday. Yeah, let me, let me, I think I can. Revival. Um, which is like a vintage whiskey store in Covington, in Northern Kentucky, I will say. Um, and uh, they had, he had just opened a gallon of 60s or 70s. I'll have to let, try and look it up to see if I can remember. A gallon of 60s or 70s, early times, much different, much different than what you're tasting. I'm sure. But, a little bit of a, a little bit of a primer for tonight. Yeah, I'm I'm loading the picture as we speak, <laughs> and and nation gets bored. This is, I'm getting Sorry, the spinning nation. wheel of doom. Oh no! Oh, there we Look go. at that. <laughs> you got to zoom in, squad. Look at that. It's a it's a like a glass barrel, a gallon with a little spigot huh. there. Um, just a little dusty. So going off of our recording last week, um, a little dusty, but also a little early times. Speaking of so which, last did. week's last week's recording was 
pretty fun. Those dust, dusties were fun to taste through. Uh, now I can say I've tasted the Chespin, which is, you know, good. Good if you're a bourbon geek. Cameron Badco says, OFO 100 is much better. Much more bold flavors and a longer finish. Stands up better in an old-fashioned two. Uh, a lot of chat here, squad. So if, if you want me to see it, just remember to at me. Otherwise, I probably won't see it. Um, Tom Lynch says, I want my instant gratification now. <laughs> a lot oh, of folks yeah, about talking that. about... A lot of folks are talking about whether they put it in Manhattans or whether old fashions, or whatever. Who's using the, who's using, who's making it with all your own ingredients, your sugar, whatever, or who's using the old forester old fashioned syrup? Is that I picked good? Some of that up. Yeah, I picked some of that up, and it's clutch. Yeah. It's clutch. That's good. Yeah, I mean, I uh, I appreciate that. I'm I'm all for the mixology of buying somebody's up, someone else's mixology because <laughs> save a lot of time. Probably do it better than I could. Uh, I'm sure I could learn that, but that would be a whole other thing that I have to learn. And it's not droopy cocktails; it's droopy whiskey. So it could be though. Just got to pick your battles. <laughs> it could be, <laughs> but again, I only have so much time. And if I was to do a droopy anything else, it would be golf. It just has to be. It'd be droopy. Oh gosh, dude, we all have our thing. Like, what's your? Do you have another thing? I mean, right, right now, now. I mean, to be fair, I did not for quite some time. It was just whiskey. Um, but yeah, I mean, my it, previous podcast host was talking about doing another interview, but then not knowing where she wanted to go after that. So we might do. We might do another episode, but I don't know necessarily that the chalky coming after that chalky yeah. podcast, chocolate, chalky podcast. Sweet man, like good chocolate is good, like art artisanal chocolate. Oh my gosh, Tom is with me. Tom is with me on this. Come on, I'm with you, Tom. Stop with the golf, Tom. Dude, I thought we were friends. Drew, if our Patreon takes off and we just do a lot more podcasts, you won't have time for golf anymore. You'll have to be. I will record. Dedicated to doing picks with me and recording. Have you ever heard of the 19th hole? And actually, the golf season in uh, Louisville is much longer than the golf season in Milwaukee. So I'm just going to – and you know, I almost golfed in 35-degree weather when I was down there in Louisville a couple weeks ago. <laughs> Dude, you would have missed all that hunting. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it was cold. So to be fair – the golf season's not that long. Uh, so JD gave us a shout out. Just signed up as a Patreon member now. JD, I think you're the first, dude. Did anybody beat him to it? Otherwise, we should send that man some samples. I uh, think Cameron said, uh, Cameron said he, he makes his own simple, doesn't make his own bitters, though. Totally fine. I uh, I do like to use Angostura, both orange and standard. Sometimes I will use um, Jack Rudy aromatic bitters uh, as well. I think those are pretty fun. I'm not a super big dabbler in bitters, but um, I do from time to time. More so, I'll ex I'll express various citrus oils to mm. see what that does to the drink as well. But this is not your peak cocktail channel, so we can't talk about that. We can talk about it. I'm just <laughs> man. I mean, I should yeah yeah. No, it's fine. I think I think getting flack is fine. I can take it. I'm a man. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! So we got like three or four squad members who have already jumped on the Patreon train. So here's oh, man, you all are awesome. Yeah, so awesome, so dank. And we'll try and make it worth your while with the bonus content. We're gonna swag you guys out. Like we've got glasses in the works. So uh, there's a tier for getting a gla uh, Glen Cairn and a fat bottom glass. You guys know my affinity for the fat bottom glass. Uh, then there's a tier where not only do you get those glasses. But you also get two T-shirts. Of course, it's staggered, so you know you sort of earn it over time. Um, and then there's tiers if you really are, you know, it, depending on how into Neat Nation you want to be, uh, you can even go as far as jumping on one of our live streams, picking topics for our shows. And it looks like um, when we're able to get to the barrel pick mode, 
Again, no promises, but we do want to. This is important to us. We want to make this happen with the barrel pick. Right. You know, we'll we'll start them at the top, so the highest tier will be guaranteed bottles, and then we'll just stagger it down from there. So if you are a Patreon member of any kind, hopefully you'll get a shot at a barrel pick at some point. But um, first priority will go to the folks who are at the top tiers. Seems like the fairest way. Uh, Tom Lynch says, commentator, make comment face, golf all you want, offline. Man, you know what? Oh my gosh. Uh, commentator says, come to Nashville and we'll golf. Yeah. So, um, Tom, I have a new best friend. I'm sorry. A lot of, a lot of cool stuff you can do in Nashville too, besides golf. Not to distract yeah. you from golfing, <laughs> but there's a lot you could do. You know, I probably shouldn't mess with Tom. He's one of our, from golf. He's our wrench. So, Tom, we're still best friends, but my comment face is also my best friend now, too. I have a multiplicity of best friends. Scott M says, I'm ready to subscribe to the Drew P. Golf channel. Make it happen, please. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay. Let's do it. Um, I, need a, I need a videographer, though. The deal with whiskey is I can set up the webcam. We can talk about whiskey. But as Brian and I do more stuff, I think it'd be fun to actually document, like to literally document. Animation. The actual hunt. Swing Nation. No, just let it go right now. I'm talking about documenting the actual bourbon. I'm back on the bourbon right now. I'm saying if I ever did golf, I would need somebody to help me because it's hard to film yourself play golf. Um, anyway, we're off the golf. I, we're done with golf now. Um, wear a GoPro on your head. <laughs> yeah, you could wear a GoPro on your head. If anybody, we're going to leave it at this. If anybody wants to golf, seriously... Um, just let me know. We'll try and work something out. Whether I'm in Kentucky or you're up in Wisconsin, you want to do a golf trip and you want to pay for me, I'll bring the bourbon. That's the deal. All right. But not in March because I got a baby. I got a baby thing. <laughs> I got to deal with the baby. <laughs> I get to deal with the baby. I'm actually getting pretty excited for that. About that. Ken Ensko saw my Make Par Not War shirt. Um, I wore in one of the things that's a pretty dank uh brand i forget the name of that brand but my boss gave me that shirt pretty cool shirt uh all right i have tasted the early times bottled and bond i am yep. ready to transition we talked so we talked about patreon mm -hmm. we talked about our week in whiskeys we've done the early times bottle the bond bottle pop yep. yeah and then we talked that we have the new Four Roses podcast episode up at entryproofpodcast.com. So That's if you right. guys need some whiskey content in your ear hole whilst you drive or, you know, shovel snow or whatever, check and But you out don't Entry have Proof to just find it on the website. It's, I, mm. I believe we're on Stitcher. We're on iTunes. We're yep. on Spotify. And it's questionable about Android because I can't figure it out, but I've been working on it. <laughs> it's apparently submitted i just can't find the show i don't know if you need an android to find it i don't know if i need a dog to find it i don't know what i need to do to find it but i have submitted it so it is it is supposedly there and you know you could subscribe to the podcast on any any of those channels or if you're on itunes i feel like i gotta give a pitch if you're on itunes i did see that we had a uh, a rating some put a rating put a rating put a review whatever you want you don't have to but do it anyway Cool. <laughs> because that would be great for us. It'd be great. Like it's if, fun. if you're a fan of neat, well, if you're a fan of Droopy Whiskey slash Entry Proof Podcast slash Abandoned Bourbon and you want Neat Nation to take over the whiskey world, all you have to do is go get leave us a review on I iTunes. It's like, that easy. It's, yeah, right? <laughs> Share it on your page. Again, we've we've been, you know, when we initially talked about it, we talked about it being episodes of of you and me talking about stuff and I don't think that we have any short of content to do that. It just so happens, like you mentioned, you know, I do have a lot of people that I talk with and I've just asked a bunch of them to come on. So we do have more interviews lined up. I imagine I'll only keep getting more and we'll keep plugging in and talking with people as well as doing some more general chit chat on a, on a more zoomed yeah. out. Level. Some analysis. So yeah. Tom's got a good question. Uh, he said, uh, did you change up the pod much from the live stream? Should I listen to it again? So we did live stream that on YouTube, the Four Roses podcast recording. If you did catch that, no, nah, it's the same. It's tight. It sounds great, actually, uh, through yeah, Brian's I kind of stuff up and adjusted some audio. That's about it. I may moved 
maybe two sections from one place to another just to make it flow a little bit better. But otherwise, same stuff, just about a, I don't know, 20 minutes shorter. Yeah. So if you did catch it on YouTube or you want to go catch the live stream on YouTube, which you're already on YouTube, you could definitely do that. Um, and then you will have gotten the content. Uh, so yeah, I mean, there's multiple ways to consume all those channels or YouTube or whatever, but n not all of the podcast episodes will be on YouTube. Some will, some won't. So stay tuned. All and right. Did send us a nice topic for, um, for a future podcast that I, I really appreciate. I'm not going to spoil it right now, but, um, I'm quite looking forward to tackling that whatever well, it is. That I don't even see it. What he people can go back and read what he said, or did he DM? No, no, no. It's on. It was on Instagram, and he and I were, he and I were. Chatting. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it, got it. Okay. Yeah. Wait, where was I? All right. Good question. Craft whiskeys, guys. Uh, let's start with some Texas whiskeys. These, like many craft whiskeys, are ones I have not had. How many uh, Texas whiskeys have you had, Brian? Oh, gosh. I don't know. You'd have to tell me what some Texas whiskey are. <laughs> so, Balcones, uh, Texas whiskey. Uh, Treaty Hill is a Texas whiskey. Uh, Garrison Brothers. No, so I'm familiar with, but I haven't had Garrison Brothers. And the same with the Balcones. Um, so, I do not remember which one of these is which, but I can bring it up on my phone. And uh, so I will taste these blindish, knowing that one of them is uh, Balcones single barrel corn whiskey. And then the other one is Garrison Brothers 94 proof Texas straight bourbon whiskey. While you're pouring, um, you know, something that we could throw out at some point in time to the uh, the patroners. Patreoners, what do you call them? Patron saints. The patron saints. Yeah, the you would call them. Uh, you would call them. Yeah, no, a patron. Yeah. The question is, I don't know who would do this. We could do a barrel aged coffee for them, but mm. yeah, questionable. Or, yeah. What we would do, we could we could work on a collab. We've, I mean, I don't know if you've done collab with other coffee roasters. We could we could figure out some sort of collab. Definitely, we could. Uh, I'm definitely going to be creating at Stone Creek something specifically for Whiskey Geeks, but I do think an exclusive, because you have access to the barrels, uh, a little coffee collab, because we will sometimes end up with a little bit extra of something super dank that we can reserve just for Neat Nation. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta do that. Blake had asked me when I was talking to him today, he asked if I had any need for the barrels for the new roof picks. I'm like, I mean, if, if, you, if you don't want them, he's like, yeah. you have too many barrels. They're fine. Just go get them. I was like, oh. done. Yeah, because uh, I will bring one home with me next time I'm down there because I had a barrel that fell apart on me. It just got too dry <laughs> and just yeah. fell apart. And uh, so I had to give it away because I was moving and I didn't want to move. I've got it. a Knob Creek barrel. I've got a couple of Willet barrels. Um, the Starlight barrel is presently aging beer in it. And then um, apparently a couple of new riffs will be will be coming. I, 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 the Christian Huber told me I could grab more starlights whenever I wanted to. I did a, a small little batch for one of my groups, uh, barrel age from one of our um, rise that we picked. And mm. um, I probably have access to a couple of those too. Wow. That's a lot of barrels. All right. You guys ready for some notes on this? These Texas it. whiskeys. All right. So the one on the left is earthy. Like it smells like dirt. Not in a bad way. You know, it's like fresh earth. And, uh, Sort of soggy tree bark. Uh, has the useful effervescence, um, but it doesn't smell overly grain heavy. So certainly earthy. Some barrel char, but not sweet oak on the nose. Some, yeah, no, that's about it. We're gonna leave it at that. In contrast, this one is grainy as. Pick your uh, noun. <laughs> it's very great. <laughs> I mean, I can't get past. It smells like, uh, uh, my gosh, like fresh wheat and uh, barley oatmeal without any sweetener in it. It is unbelievably grainy. 
uh, fresh baked bread. Which, I mean, if you're thinking, okay, fresh baked bread. Oh, yeah, that smells nice. But when you know what fresh baked fresh, <laughs> say that five times fast, fresh baked bread, when you smell that in a whiskey, you know what it's going to taste like. And that's not a good thing. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, I can't wait to taste this. No, I'm, I'm not looking forward to tasting this. This one I'm super curious about. So let's start here. This is the, sorry, guys, my computer is in the way. There we go. All right, so this one was the uh, earthy, kind of a little char forward, some spice. Mmm, not bad. Not bad at all. Some good amount of uh, uh, of barrel character. Pretty sweet. There is still a little bit of a youth on the palate. That is, it's there. So just a suggestion of kind of raw grains, but not not heavy. Mmm, like a real nice sweetness. Very caramely. Um, the finish is it gets. That's where the grain is. Kind of hits you in the retro nasal as the the whiskey essence wafts up into your nasal cavity. But uh, interesting, interesting whiskey. Uh, this second one. Oh, and again, these are from these are my last samples from that big box I got from Matty Pletz, um, Milwaukee guy. So thanks, Matt. I mean, it's so bready. I can't even begin to describe <laughs> how bready this is. <laughs> like when I went back and put my nose in that again to take a sip, I'm just like, holy buckets. Like it is, it is bread all over. Um, and uh, like it almost makes me nauseous. It's not grotesque in its flavor. Like there's, well, let me see. Like with some whiskeys, I like last week I got swimming pool, like chlorine. I don't really get like off-putting chemicals, but uh, there's something going on with the distillation or the fact that it was maybe aged for six months that's giving this heavy, heavy sort of uh, raw distillate white dog kind of impact. It's like bubble gum, but not sweet. That's what I have to say about these first two samples. Let's, uh, Tom Lynch says, and I quote, it's not grotesque. <laughs> That's a compliment. All right, let me bring this up from Matt. We'll find out what these guys were, which one was which. Wait for it. Okay, so number 12 is uh so that would be the one that i liked better that is balconis true blue so that's cask strength single barrel straight corn whiskey at 111 proof i did not get that much proof mm. full of flavor though that's encouraging i've heard really good things about balconis rye i've not had that either I'm sure I'll probably get to that in this round of 100. Uh, but I'm encouraged by this first taste here of Balcona's product. It's pretty good. Um, all right. Then the other one was the Garrison Brothers. So I have not heard good things about Garrison Brothers. Oof. Yeah. I mean, actually, every time I've heard somebody they're like who knew things about bourbon, um, which... Uh, so nobody from Neat Nation has recommended uh, Garrison Brothers, and the reviews I've heard have been not great. So John White says, "Drew P Whiskey, have you worked on the new shirts yet? I assume the bottled and bond ones. Uh, I have them designed, and I have to order them. I have had a decent amount of cash outflow <laughs> related to this, um, so we will get that done." Um, but we're, we're likely going to use uh, the bottle and bond shirts for the first round of the Patreon shirt too. So 
if you what we'll do is when i launch a shirt and we plan to use it for patreon i will tell you so if you are a patreon supporter you don't get a shirt twice that would be a bummer unless you really like the shirt in which case that's great good for you uh liberty Li not licensed did you warm your palate with elijah craig barrel proof no i started uh today with the elijah craig um pirate bottle so 2016 non-age stated old label elijah craig all right so bottom line on these first two samples balconis very very promising I like it. It's 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 not bad. Um, then the Garrison Brothers, very not good. Um, borderline grotesque. <laughs> uh, yeah, one of the things I want to do in this craft whiskey journey, I don't really, I don't want to be a jag. Like I don't want to be a jerk about it. But if I don't like it, I just want to tell you guys honestly. I don't like it. Like, I don't like pulling punches in reviews. Um, I've seen too many whiskey reviews, particularly around craft whiskeys that are um, maybe a little too filtered. Brian, how many whiskey, like, how often do you think you have a whiskey where you're just like, ugh, <laughs> that's not really my jam? <laughs> not often, but I'm also not necessarily trying a whole bunch of just, um, you know, craft whiskeys from around. It's just not something I've, I hadn't really thought about doing it before. So, you know, I feel like most of this, most of the stuff I try is, um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'd say most of the stuff I did too, before, before this, I did a couple of craft whiskey tastings with my squad here in Wisconsin. Um, I'm actually going to do a new cup that Garrison brothers was so, Oh my word, guys. Like the aromatics on that was so pungent, that bready note. Uh, there's not going to be any tasting past that. Anyway, I tasted a decent amount of craft whiskeys in those tastings, probably 20 or so. Um, and some of them were like, oh, this is really good. And others were just like, my word. <laughs> Cameron says, my dad must not love me. Got me a Garrison Brothers single barrel for Christmas. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> so... Man, here's the, yeah, here's the downside. Um, Garrison Brothers branding is rad. They just got national distribution with Total Wine. And their branding is so sick. Like, I've been tempted to buy some because it's. I'm from Texas, guys. Like, I want Texas whiskey to be great. And Garrison Brothers brand is dank, so I want it to be awesome. But that was not good, what I just had. Uh, help. Garrison Brothers wasn't looking for sponsors. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm gonna drink this, and then we're getting clean glasses. Where's um Nevada? Never mind. That's, that's yeah. That text. No, it's not even I think close. Vegas. Las Las Vegas, Nevada, isn't it? Uh, yeah. So it goes like Texas, then you go west from there is New Mexico, and then. Uh, west from there is Arizona, and north from there is Nevada. No, no, no. I'm not talking about geography. I was just talking about smoke wagon. <laughs> oh, for, for for a moment, I thought they were Texas. Oh, it just sounded like Texas. They, 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 you said, sure the words I heard was "Where is Nevada?" It's not Texas. <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> yeah, no smoke wagons out there. Which I did. I was able to try smoke wagon uncut, unfiltered, not long ago. And I enjoyed that. It was good. Um, I think uh, I have some more smoke wagon. No, on Kyle, way we will not talk smoke wagon. We've actually been explicitly told to not talk smoke wagon on the channel. Who told us that? No, no one told us that. We could talk oh. smoke wagon. <laughs> All right. So I mentioned those samples were from Maddie Pletz. These ones are from Pat and Joanne Petty. So if you're watching, thank you guys very much. Please enjoy these Ohio craft distilleries. We hope this will help you get to your 100 samples for 2021. I enjoy watching your YouTube show and wish you the best in 2021. Pat. Pat's a great guy. I also have a phone number here, so we should call Pat. Should we should, should we call Pat on the live? Do it. All right. Let's do it. I got my headphones in, but I can probably hear through it. It's going to be weird. He's going to get a call from some 
30 year old guy in Wisconsin who's been drinking while filming on YouTube. I'll put him on speaker. <laughs> All right. I mean, it will make it less awkward for the rest of us here. Uh, the 105 of us, including myself. <laughs> I feel like it's a radio show now. It's like, let's get him on the horn. Let's prank call him. Here we oh go. my gosh, it does sound like that now. <laughs> Can it talk in my ear? It's probably not going to answer because it's from a bizarre number. Is Donnie from uh, what's that guy's name from? From um, he's on Howard Stern. Was he Howard Stern? Maybe your call has been problem. forwarded to an automated voice messaging oh, system. Please. Leave a Nine, good message. Three, yeah, oh, seven, I will. five, four, six, six, one, six, six. Well, now we all know their phone number. At the tone, please record your message. When you finish <laughs> recording, you may hang up or press one for more options. Hey, Pat, this is Drew Pond uh, from the Droopy Whiskey YouTube channel. Was giving you a call because I'm actually live right now and I'm about to taste your samples. So if you hey, are Pat. not, you should check the chat, Brian. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm realize I'm leaving you a voicemail um, while I'm talking, but um, thank you so much you for contributing Pat. the samples. Pat, that hey. is really rad of you. I appreciate Pat, please. it uh, so oh, much. Shoot. And uh, so just thanks for oh, that. Man. And if you want to check out, my observations and tasting yeah, notes on those just jump on to YouTube either right now or you can, of course, catch the post recording here in just a little bit. So, uh, thanks again. Uh, hopefully, we can connect sometime soon. Uh, See ya. Smoke I've not exactly kept up with it, but apparently, it's some commotion. <laughs> What's wrong with you? I'm like trying to like leave a nice voicemail. Sorry, I didn't I... know Pat could hear me, I, I just didn't know. I'm wearing headphones, <laughs> just thought maybe. Uh, all right, so these are from Pat and Joanne Petty. Oh, Cameron said you just put their phone number live on the internet. I know I did. I'm gonna cut it out. I can edit this in post. I can. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't call me. I'm the one that's rude. You say uh, I'm the one. I just wanted Pat to. I just wanted Pat to know that I love him. That's all. I can. Yeah. And whatever. He doesn't know you. <laughs> he could. He could. If anyone wants me to leave them a voicemail, comment in the chat. I'll All leave right. you a voicemail. So uh, smoke wagons are on their way. JD, who's now a Patreon supporter, just texted me, so they should be here tomorrow. So JD, freaking hero. Oh, Thanks, dog. Yeah. All right. First up, we've got Tom Foolery, 100 Proof, Bottled and Bond, Bourbon. So again, these are all Ohio. So this is Chagrin, distilled and bottled in Chagrin Falls, Ohio. Next, we have Middle West Spirits, which I had already. A Middle West Spirits. Uh, this is their straight weeded bourbon whiskey, Michelon Reserve, which I had, but I had a single barrel pick. This is the standard straight weeded bourbon whiskey, Michelon Reserve. This is 95 proof, so not a single barrel. And, but I do have the single barrel that I already tasted, so we can do a little comparison. So, got that. And this is this is nice, too, to be able to try those side by side, the pick versus the standard release. And then we have um, bourbon, watershed distillery bourbon. I don't know if it's straight or not. Brian, can you maybe look up and see if the watershed distillery bourbon is straight bourbon whiskey or not? Uh, they say distilled and bottled in Columbus, Ohio, 90 proof, but I have no idea about the age. I had watershed aged in apple brandy casks. That was one of the craft whiskeys I had. This one is there. Stay on there again? What, does it say? what does it say? It says 90 proof watershed distillery bourbon. That's all it says. All right, let's see. Bourbon whiskey. Nope, that's not good. <laughs> Interesting. So yeah, I'll try not to let that. Yeah, this, this might be different. This says, uh, yeah, ninety proof bourbon from Watershed Distillery, bourbon whiskey, small batch, handcrafted. All the cool little tag notes. That's what I see. Okay, no age statement, no straight. So Lord knows what the age is on this. Uh, the tomfoolery. 
at least three years. Okay. All right. That's in Ohio, cool. made barrels. You'll tru- truly understand that patience pays off. <laughs> Bourbon marketing is amazing. It's fantastic. Marketing in general, man. It's, it mm. is a thing. Yeah. All right. So Tom Foolery is what we're tasting here. Uh, so again, bonded bourbon. So at least four years, bottled in bond. Um, very lemony, very light, light on the nose, citrus, little grain, which is a bummer, even you know, in a four-year whiskey. But anyway, bottoms up. So bread up front, more of that bread note. This is a clean glass, by the way, nation. But then I get tons of, of spice and herby, that kind of niceness reminds me of Willet a little bit, actually. Um, enjoyable on the finish. I'm liking the way it's lingering, but that heavy bread grain up front, I did not like as much. The lemony on the nose is interesting, like plenty of uh, citrus spritz. Almost reminded me of Lysol without the... Uh, like sniffing cleaners. Not that I've sniffed cleaners, but not that I haven't sniffed cleaners. Like any 10 year old kid, you're like, man, that smells interesting. Sharpie markers, big fan. Sharpie markers. You're missing some chat. We've got uh, Austin says, I think Brian's a Four Roses guy. You were right, Austin. You were right. Uh, and then Edward says, I only own four bottles of Four Roses because he can see them right here. <laughs> That's you, clearly it. Yeah. You were correct that I do own these Four Roses. And then Kyle texted me. And asked me how many I have. I am. I'm sorry. I cannot tell you right now. I am in. I'm in a a setting to record. So these shelves, if you if you watch regularly on Thursdays, these rotate. I do have a couple more four roses oh, back yeah. here. Yeah, you do. I just switch what's on this shelf. Uh, the the first time we went live, or the excuse me, the first time I thought we were going live, I had I have two shelves up here here. And I had them all completely full, but uh, when it was live. He he pulled our video; it crops this way, uh, it, so it's not full frame. And so you you so I stopped putting stuff on the top shelf. There's nothing up there anymore. Look, there's only look now. There's five. Now there's five, but I do have a shelf here, and then I have a shelf that is above it. But this is not my whiskey room. Sadly, my whiskey room is right below my my kids' room, and um, it is a speakeasy, if you will. There's a couple of seats, um, is dim lighting, uh, all my whiskey. It, just as of recently, I've expanded it to speakeasy slash board game library. So if you watch um, Josh Test Dummies, um, very similar to the dude on there. I've got you know 150 board games. I used to work in board games before I coffee. So um, big fan of board games, big fan of whiskey. Put them in a dark room. That's look at big old water. Dude, hydrate or die. So I mean, if I can bequeath any wisdom to nation, it is that you should drink a lot of water. It's helpful for life. Uh, I pee a lot though. That is true. Like I, I was on a stream with uh uh mash and drum and my bourbon journey and destination bourbon i had to pee so bad i had to get up and leave it was really rough they made fun of me while i was gone i wasn't invited back (laughs) that was a good night though that was fun um all right so tom foolery solid um i wish i had a little more barrel time but promising you know that bready grainy i i feel like because it wasn't all encompassing that they, if it was like a six year, seven year, they'd be able to move past that because I like that really spicy finish. I like the citrus actually in that one. Next up, we've got the Middle West. And so I'm going to pour the Middle West single barrel I had. So again, this is the Michelone, Michelone, I don't know, M I C H E L O N E, Michelone Reserve. This is a weeded bourbon. I have the standard release at 95 proof, and then I have a single barrel here. So I'm going to hit that 95 proof. Do an honest assessment of that, and then I'll get to the single barrel. Um, also um, light on the nose, but no grain, no citrus. I am loving the liveliness in the chat right now. Um, so one of the dudes asked, um, 
single barrel versus small batch. So down here are the um, the the LEs small batches. So a little different from regular small batch. Um, in general, um, I am probably more a fan of the single barrel than the small batch for base product. Just general. I do. Yeah, like me the too. Small batch select. I do like the small batch select a lot. I think a little bit more than Drew might. But small batch select. And then uh, Kyle is still razzing me saying, I still haven't said how many four roses that I do have. I would say including LEs, it is it's... possible I have like 34 roses bottles. Oh my gosh. So I, I have, I'm, I can count mine. One, two. I have a lot of the barrel pegs. One, two, five, seven, eight. So I have 10. That's what I have. I have 10. Yeah. Yep. I could be wrong. I could, you know, I'd have to go count, but I don't want to, I don't want to leave because I don't want to leave the chat. I don't want to leave you. Yeah, I no, I would be lost by myself. <laughs> All right. Swing let's nation. talk about the swing movie. nation. <laughs> Dude, that's going to be on Patreon. I'm, so here's <laughs> what I might do. Really I'll create a. Michael's Michael saying golden age of board games. His collection's two bookshelves and growing. What's up, Michael, on the board games? All yeah, right. So man. here's. We should create two more tiers on Patreon, one for golf, one for board games. And so after a year on these tiers, they get a night of board games with us where we drink whiskey and play board games, which would be dope. I would just like that anyway. Uh, and then on the other one, it's a day of golf where we play golf and drink whiskey. Like that sounds amazing. Tell me I'm not a genius. <laughs> Boom, let's um, do it. All right, so this Middle West, we got to get through these. I've got a couple more to get, three more to get through. Um, smells good. Uh, sweeter, still lighter, no grain. Uh, plenty of barrel on there. And guys, Middle West weeded bourbon. I liked the single barrel when I tasted it, but even the standard 95 proof is really good, actually. Um, I don't have Welder Special Reserve right now. But that's what I would want to taste it up against. But I would take this over Larceny based on my recollection of Larceny. Rod Spiner says, did you already wolf down nearly one third of the Michter's toasted rye? No, dog. This open bottle is the barrel strength rye. The toasted rye is right there. It's not open yet. If I open it, it will undoubtedly be on a live stream. I'm trying to make that kind of a policy is where I open bottles on the live stream, which now I have way more open bottles than I did. Um, but that way we're getting the most out of it, sharing the experience. Uh, Hunt, yeah. Kyle, Kyle, who's always in our chats every week, watches us. I, uh, I was able to hunt a couple of bottles down for him here in the old Kentucky of the Michters. <laughs> be careful. Uh, yeah, Everybody's yeah. going to be blown up your phone, man. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Um, I did actually get him a Michters toast as well. Um, and then the Burb, uh, Barks on Bourbon Company 4. So I, I grabbed two bottles when I grabbed mine. Yeah, which uh, apparently a little bit of this Bard sound. Try to help Tom find some too. Oh, crap, dude. Okay, guys, do not sleep on this whiskey. If you have a chance to buy Bardstown Bourbon Company Discovery Series number four, it is some next level stuff. I still want to find a barrel too, I think. I think I want to get myself a two. Oh, batch two? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's just, I just lost that. Okay. So the Middle West, 95 proof, quite good. The single barrel is really good. Um, so of all of the craft whiskeys that I've had, actually, I'm going to save some of this because uh, kind of running up ahead of the rest of the craft whiskeys that I've had is this Middle West Spirits weeded single barrel. Every time I come back to it, I'm like, dang. So the 95 proof is quite good, but this cast strength single barrel is next level. Are they also from Texas or where are they from? No, they're Ohio. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you can get this at Liquor Barn, actually. Not the single barrel, but the standard uh, 95 proof. Spirits, huh? Yep. Okay. Uh, so the next one, third on the night, is the Watershed at least three-year bourbon. <sighs> So here's the, I want, I want craft whiskey to win. I believe in craft whiskey, given enough time, uh, enough time in the barrel. 
But man, it needs more time in the barrel. I'm going to come back to this. Scott M says, are you keeping track of your favorite crap whiskey so you can do a top 10 at the end of the year? Yes. Yes, I am. I'm trying to save a little bit of everything. Um, unless I'm like, man, you know, I'm trying to share samples too. I've got some squad members around uh, who have been supportive. And uh, so if I taste a sample, I try and pass them along. But I am keeping certain samples to try again. I will do a top 10, at least top five. Getting back to this watershed, it's grainy. Very uh, punchy for the proof. I mean, we're talking about a 90 proof, but it smells like alcohol. And not as bready. Like, it's almost... <sighs> if I just went to it with my eyes closed, I might think that it wasn't even... It didn't even spend time in the barrel. Very corny. So when I grew up, I grew up in Portales, New Mexico, and many other places. My dad was Air Force. So we lived in base housing for Cannon Air Force Base, which was in Clovis, but we lived in Portales. I see the viewers dropping as I speak. Um, anyway, <laughs> we lived across the street from an ethanol processing, you know, or I may have been a distillery. I have no idea. As a kid, I just knew there was ethanol over there. I had no idea what ethanol was. But it, when the wind blew the wrong direction, it was like, whoa. Ooh. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> it smells so strong, it almost makes you sick. And in young whiskeys, um, you get hit with some of that. It shows back up and it's a little traumatic. It's here. And some makes me used up to 10% of it. So there's that. <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> it makes me hesitant to put it in my body. Like normally when you smell something and you're like, oh. You're not like in a rush to ingest that sucker and, you know, have, have your body process it. Hey, but here we go. Man, Brian. Oh, I won't talk about this until after you take it. Um, some raisins. This is not totally unredeemable. It is very grainy, but I get a suggestion of fruit. That's like, okay. Mm, eh. but it's not something I would ever reach for. Yeah, okay. So it is definitely better than the Garrison Brothers. It has a little bit more richness, more sweetness, very raisiny, but also very grainy. Oh my gosh. So I'm not a big fan of that one either. Uh Moral of the story, tomfoolery, decent. Garrison Brothers, bad. Middle West Spirits, Dude, very good. Watershed, not great. I'm trying Matt, to talk about whiskey. He, I know, but Matt, ADHD whiskey just entered the room, man. Oh, good. Matt, man. what is up, man? And we need to make sure we hit this super chat, too. Uh, whiskey Wiggle says, hydrate says, hydrate says, Drew P. Freely. Joke. I'm lost. Jokes are better explained. Google IP freely for reference. I don't even know if I want to. Oh, IP freely. I got it. I got you. Matt, here's the deal, Matt. So I was just talking to Drew before you came on. I was doing a couple of Matt impressions. America. And <laughs> I was, I, I just, I was looking at my, I was, I'm working on my new video setup thing. And I'm like, I'm just trying to tap into Matt level. That's all I'm trying to do. You know, I'm trying to tap into Matt level. Do your whiskey to... spinning. Do do the spinning whiskey. Like, well, if I you're going to talk whiskey. about your Matt impression, you have to do it on camera. <laughs> all right. So, I mean, I've got to, I mean, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to like zoom in on it here, here. I'm going to have to. Yeah. looks good. Yeah. Nice. America. And then we just get it dizzy, get it twirling, get it spinning. Get it dancing on the dance floor. It's a uh, Sadie Hawkins dance. And then those mm. fancy pants. Got to make it twizzly turly. You know what I'm saying? Twizzly, twizzly like a twizzler pulling people. Just twizzle it up. And that's a Matt. And that's a Matt. Cheers to you, sir. Matt, thanks for joining the chat, dog. Uh, we should connect for sure. Uh, Matt's been crushing it for a while. He's actually the winner of the Bardstown Bourbon Company World's Best whiskey taster. 
competition, right? That's what and it's I, called, something like that. And I'm going to uh, assume the people in the chat are familiar with the ADHD Whiskey Channel. If you are not, go over there, hit subscribe. When we're done, uh, obviously. Or open a yeah, new well, window. <laughs> and, uh, and the reason I say that, too, is because it, it is impressive with the amount of people on YouTube who are like, Oh, I've got this media sample. I've got this blah, blah, blah. I've got this blah, blah, blah. I, I was really appreciative. As someone who does go after the BTAC, the limited reasons, the limited releases, the allocations and stuff, I love seeing his review of whiskeys of the year that, for the most part, are things that are acquirable. And yeah. it was not only admirable, but um, was one of the things that really got me like, you know, like, man, do I need to go into after these discoveries for Barchon Bourbon Company? I was a big fan of the uh, the finished products, but uh, you know, yeah. Cheers. Uh, so that was three. Are you? Uh, is that? Uh, is we got one crap? more. So no, that was five. So I did the two from Texas. I did the three Ohio, and then I have one more to get to twenty. So I have tasted this whiskey in one of my videos, but I'm going to revisit it tonight. It's actually a bottle I have, so I'm going to contribute one. I don't have much craft whiskey in bottles, but this one, I found myself reaching for a decent amount because in the wintertime, uh, a good rye just wins. So this one is the Limousin Rye from Dancing Goat Distillery in Wisconsin. Uh, I think Baraboo. No, Cambridge. Sorry. It's out there. Uh, but this is a six-year rye. It is their own juice, so non-sourced. Cask strength, the first like, age-stated cask strength release they did. And when I first tasted it, I was like, holy dang. Like This thing is so herbaceous and minty dill and uh, parsley. It's so fresh, um, kind of reminiscent of uh, the Willet Four Year Rise, but with a little less oaky presence, even though it's six years old. Uh, but I, the more I've had it, the more I like it. Uh, it's got some uh, licorice, some anise up in there, and then a clovey, clovey aromatic principle. Principle, nope. Component. Anyway, there you go. And the nose carries through right to the palate. It's really delicious, actually. I should send you a sample. It does taste youngish, but not in a grainy way. Just in a punchy, like it, it is, a, it's punchy. It's very minty, candy canes, uh, but a lot of sweetness to balance out that herbaceous, herbaceousness. So this is actually still on shelves in Wisconsin. So if you guys are local and you like really, um, well, I'll call green rise. The limousin six year rye will be right up your alley, I think. What's that? How far away is that from you? Uh, like three hours. Yeah. Not nearby. I have not been there. I've been to a few of the distilleries around Milwaukee, but they, I mean, like the best. The best bourbon that I've had out of Milwaukee or out of Wisconsin is uh, J. Henry to date. And J. Henry does not distill their own juice, but they age it. It's distilled to their specs and they age it on site. This is just north of Madison, uh, like 30 minutes north of Madison. Um, so they do a good job. They actually grow their own grains too. But I don't know who does their distilling. Does anybody in the chat know who does J. Henry distilling? That may be a secret. I don't think they've disclosed that. Did I talk to you about the Wilderness Trail rye that I tried locally like mm -hmm. the other week? And I tried uh, a local group's there's a store. A guy I know who runs a store. And I guess a collab pick between his store and a local group. For this wilderness trail rye and i don't know if i've just i mean i know for a fact i do not try a lot of them, but they just haven't really been on my radar and this rye that i tried was out it had a great nose a little bit of floral but the the main takeaway on the palate was lime which is hmm. not i ever give 
things. It's like this candy coated lime. And so I am I'm planning to snag myself a barrel, a bottle, not a barrel, not a whole barrel, but a bottle of it. Sweet. That's dope. I've heard great things about wilderness rye in general. But again, like guys, how many whiskeys are you going to try? And thanks to Need Nation. Appreciate you guys. Um, I've been able to try a decent amount of craft whiskeys so far. Now I'm up to 20. I've got probably 20 more samples at least to go through. So I'm well on my way to 100. And it's really enlightening. Like a lot of different flavors, finding some stuff I really like, finding some things I'm going to be nervous about <laughs> moving forward. But um, it's tough to go out and buy all that stuff. So I definitely recommend like be generous with the samples, not not to me, but to each other. And uh, don't hesitate to ask like, hey, can I try that? Like, it's a little bit weird to be like, hey, can I try that George D. Stag you just opened? Because uh, that's expensive. But if you're like, hey, you want to do a sample trade? I would love to try X bottle you have open. That's just a great way to make friends, I think. Um, Brian, where'd you get that sweater? That's a pretty cool sweater. I'm glad you asked. This is one of those pieces of swag I got for not partaking in the tasting at Lux oh. Row. Wow. So they sell those at Lux Row. They do at Lux Row. And they have ones too that just say whiskey. Um, mm -hmm. But this is kind of like a pullover hoodie um, with a nice kind of like Jersey style embroidered letters. Yeah. I, I was looking oh. through the it wasn't exactly because I didn't drink. At the end, they said, you know, for being a part of the pick, you all could get a get any hat or piece of apparel that you would like. And uh, I got a hat that he said, here, here's a hat for not drinking. You can also keep your water glass. So uh, thanks, dog. Thanks. Thank you. So which that water glass came in handy when they poured me the sample of the the barrel that we picked but anyway um yeah so from lux row which maybe they have a website but very cool i like the nondescript for distillery just kind of barge town swag about it maybe you've heard the podcast about all of the unsolved murders in barge town could also be an advertisement for that never know why well, didn't we didn't make that podcast no, we didn't, but it exists. You should check it out. What is that? Like, What's that from? It is it is a podcast called Bargetown, which is about the unsolved murder cases in Bargetown. And there's a lot of these? Yeah, true story. Absolutely. You should check that it out. Cool. Is... Shane McAllister, she's a local news, um, she's a local news anchor uh in town, and she does the narration, production, whatever for that. Um yeah, pretty, pretty cool. You should definitely check it out. Eric Sawyer says, can you create a special emoji for your one finger Neat Nation salute? Uh, as soon as I figure out how to do that. <laughs> I have no idea how to do that, but sure. I know uh, Matt at ADHD has his own emoji. Matt, throw your emoji up there. Or does that, do I have to do that? Because I know I've seen you drop that on the Bourbon Junkies feed. <clears throat> anyway, we'll figure that out. We're still we're we're early in the game. Uh, it's like making of a murder. I don't like murder; it disturbs me. So I don't like watch shows and be like, "Oh, I can't wait to watch a show about murder." I actually can't sleep. <laughs> oh man, I've so, got a lot of podcasts you will not want to listen to. Then, yeah, no doubt. Like, does that make me a wimp? I don't know. If you think it does, that's fine. I'm okay You're being a wimp. You're getting all feng shui from your golf podcast, and I'm over here with alternate reality murder and so crazy my boss shows. So, so people get on here and they describe me uh, inappropriately. Uh, they make judgments about what I'm into. Let's put it that way. Which, whatever. I mean, like, why would you say that? But uh, anyway. <laughs> We had a few spammers who didn't like me very much. And uh, look, I, I am who I am. My boss calls me a delicate flower um, periodically. And it's because I almost fell off a volcano when we were sourcing coffee in Guatemala. Just had a hard time staying on my feet. But you know what? 
just you know you are who you are and uh i've never tried to be a very machismo dude i'm not very good at it um i'm not i don't have the build for machismo i while i have plenty of body hair that's about where it ends and uh so i'm yeah it is what it is guys and uh take right, it or leave it but here's the deal though you've got whiskey wiggle who said there's more money in true crime podcasts than bourbon podcasts so here's the deal well, we didn't get into uh, this for the money. <laughs> it's a pretty expensive that, hobby. If all right, Drew, hold on though. If we could get Matt to do a true crime podcast with us, we can put it on our Patreon. <laughs> just saying, Matt. We just, would have, you, we just have Matt the whole time. Podcast with us. That would know. be a fun. That would be a fun live stream. Uh, yeah, we could make that, we could make that entertaining. I feel like it would definitely be a side project. I don't think I could stomach much of that. I, and I guarantee you I wouldn't sleep. So I'd have to drink enough where I just passed out. <laughs> oh my gosh. It would have to be some delicate flowers in that podcast. I think there's probably some delicate flowers in the chat. If you guys identify as a flower, I would like you to drop a flower emoji in the chat right now. I would appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, ADHD says a true crime show. Oh, hell yes. All right. RW says last week was anatomy. This week, body hair. Reconsidering viewing. Listen, I didn't take my shirt off. I didn't show you. <laughs> I didn't show you the carpet. <laughs> you listen. Yeah, I mean, I'm a very open person. Um there's not a lot I won't talk about. There's ways I won't talk about it. There's, there are things that I will not say because they insinuate or that they're like just overly aggressive, overly crass. At the same time, I will talk about things that people generally generally regard as crass because they're important life things. Uh, yeah, I'll spare you guys. I won't. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to avoid a question that happened like 20 minutes ago, and someone had asked uh, in here. I want to say it's Brian, but I could be wrong. Had asked what my favorite Four Roses recipe is. Go for it. Um, Tough question. Quick. Yeah, hold on one second. We talked about that on the pod a little bit, actually. So if you haven't listened to the pod, go to Entry Proof Podcast, where it will be far less rambling, like tonight, because it's a live stream where we had a very loose agenda. Won't be all this. Um, it'll be very to the point and professional and fun still. And we did a podcast tasting through four rows of single barrels and talking about recipes. Uh, but now you can answer the question, Brian. That's fine. I will. I will say so. It might not be my overall favorite recipe, but lately there is a a run. There is a a run of barrels from. Uh, a particular warehouse that are OESF recipes and they're north of 12 years old, like 12 and a half years old, anywhere from 12 years and three months to 12 years and nine months so far. And generally on the fourth and fifth tier that are just really good. They're really good. They have a little bit more char to the profile than what I feel like I'm used to getting. Um, and there's something about them that's just a little bit special. So I don't want to say OESF is my favorite recipe necessarily, but it is, it is the new hotness for me. It is the thing that I'm the most interested in. So I have, uh, about 10 of the barrels that I have right now are from those runs. Sweet. Yeah. I mentioned in the podcast, my favorite, um, recipe, I don't have a favorite recipe. I can't say it, but my favorite bottle was an OES cube. It was fantastic. Um, I, I have to say, when I called for the flower power representation, we got a lot of flower it emojis. I'm proud of you it guys. It is blast in the feed. Yep. No, own it. Own it. We're spiraling now. I'm spiraling. Pull up, man. <laughs> Let's get back. Uh, let's get back to the whiskey here. I came back to the early times. I feel myself sweating now. Why would sweating. you do that? Why would you have gone back to the early times? Because I was like done with the craft whiskey and I wanted to come back. I wanted Dude, to come back home. Seriously. 
I didn't hear you. I was talking. It's fine. I want to hear what you had to say. I just said seriously a whole bunch of times. Oh, okay, cool. Anyway, uh, I came back to it, and particularly coming off um, some less than stellar craft whiskeys, had some very stellar craft whiskeys. Don't get me wrong. That Middle West was next level. The Balconis, very promising. The early times is very nice. It's a uh, everyday, very solid everyday sipper. Mm. Plenty of spice. I still get that sort of velvety, kind of leathery, little chalk kind of texture. So I I almost never get that in Buffalo Trace, which is very, there's a clarity to Buffalo Trace kind of products, but I get sort of this cloudy, chalky mouthfeel in uh, some Heaven Hill, particularly Larceny. I mentioned that. It's coming through in this early times, but in general, really solid, really solid stuff. Antonio Diaz saying that he got some four rows of small batch select. It, uh, it's not related to early times. Was not a fan. Just in the neck pour, but not a fan. Uh, I would be curious what you don't like about it because it is quite possible that it does not change. Um, so I'd be curious to know what you don't like about it. Uh, so I'm getting some flack from Liberty Not Licensed. How can you sit there with that absolutely amazing toasted barrel right there behind you beckoning? So you Liberty... He's been if giving we, it all night. He wants that toasted popped. Okay, so between now, so we're going to sign off by 10 because I have to get up and go to work tomorrow. If in the next 10 minutes we get over $20 in Super Chats, then I'll pop it. Otherwise, I'm going to save it for a video, What's the Deal with Mictors, which would be a fun bottle pop. And, uh, you know, those videos, those What's the Deals, they tend to... They tend to perform. I can still use it for that, but then it wouldn't be a bottle pop on that. So it's up to you guys um, what you want to see tonight. But I, I mean, how many whiskeys did I taste? <laughs> this is palate fatigue. That's a thing. Granted, very, very small pours. Thirst trap, $20. So how do you define palate fatigue versus warmed up and ready to start tasting? Uh, yeah, so it's an ability to mentally focus. Hmm. Tom Lynch says five dollars challenge accepted. Fifteen to go. Um, so yeah, I do think it, it's about mental clarity. Is tasting is hard if you have got the buzz. If you're like, oh no, I'm I'm with it, which I still feel with it. You know, I've done very very small pours tonight, so I've not ingested that much alcohol. Well, crap. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah. Liberty uh, not licensed ponies up for the 20. All right. Well, I would say Antonio, Antonio, again, he says it has a perfume herbal flavor. He can't quite get past. I am sorry. I'm sorry to, to tell you this. Um, it does have a little bit of this kind of floral um, herbal quality to it. It is going to continue through the bottle. I'm sorry. It is, you know, sometimes I think about it and try and figure out what is, what is a Brent Elliott profile versus, um a Jim Rutledge profile and I feel like um I feel like Brent Elliott has subtle softer a uh, little bit more nuanced profile in general that that he goes after is is my general opinion now 2020 small batch so uh excuse me 2020 limited edition small batch does, change that i i would if i were to describe it say that the 2020 small batch limited edition is brent elliott's attempt at doing a jim rutledge so um anyway there are a lot of people who are wanting to have this bottle popped so i'm going to yeah. step away so uh big thanks to the squad tom and liberty and mash bill for contributing just know guys that any money that we get right now is not at all going into our pockets between this and patreon we're putting it back into the channel because brian and i are doing this because it's fun we enjoy it uh talking with you guys talking with each other meeting new people in whiskey it's just so dope so thank you very much and yes, you have more uh, more than earned this um, 
So I'll read real quick. Mash Bill says, pop it. Love what you do and would love to have you on my channel soon. How do I contact you for a collab? Dude, go to Instagram at Drew P. Whiskey or at Entry Proof Podcast. Send me a DM. You would also get Brian on there as well. Oh, $20. Wow. Uh, Coca Trillel with a $20 super chat. Make it a good one. You guys. Excuse me. You guys are great. Thank you. You guys are killer. I mean, this is true is this for a little bit, you know, and I just like to drink whiskey and I talk and make notes way too much. So, you know, I've done it with coffee, I've done it with chocolate, and then, you know, I've been into whiskey for a while too. So I just like to taste and talk. So, you know, doing this together has been great. Drew is is a king. So we'll let him do his king stuff. And I will just sit back here and jester. Well, you have this, you have this bottle too, right? Uh, it is almost gone. I mean, it's like that Dude, much there. Get I it. Run downstairs. I might have already finished it. I'm going to have to find out. You don't know. You already finished All right. Hurry up. I Run downstairs. I think yours is 2020. Let's. Um, oh, okay. Well, that's fine. Do you want me to I, go? Yeah, I want you to go. I want you to. If and you I'm have gonna one, get it. I'm going to count my four roses while I'm there. I'll be back. All right. <laughs> All right. We'll pop this as soon as Brian gets back. Um, yeah, Brian's a great guy. I'm not going to talk crap about him. I reached out to him because uh, I knew he was a great guy, and uh, he's a good foil. You know, um, he can bust my balls, but he's not. Uh, uh, he's not. You know, there's sort of this level. Like I, I just use the expression "bust my balls," but at the same time, like there's this. Ooh, there's a tone. <laughs> that I want this channel to be about. That's just very kind. Um, and Brian is an immensely kind person and super generous. Um, so, I mean, you guys got to know him over a few streams here. He's really uh, awesome, awesome dude. So stoked to be able to do the Entry Proof podcast with him, be able to have him on the channel more. And of course, um, you know, we're going to create some cool stuff here together in the days ahead. All right. Did you hear all uh, that? I, I did because I have Bluetooth headphones in. Oh, wow. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. yeah. Um, 22 for roses. So I'm not I'm not crazy with my collection. I know it seems like it, but I have yeah, a little bit. 22 for roses. I and I I have finished my toasted. So uh, all I have is uh, Oh, toasted. Strength. Oh, that's barrel strength bourbon. Is that it? It's not even toasted. That's fine. People so, want to hear about that. So we'll bottle pop that. I'll you, yeah, I'll taste this, you taste this, and we'll sign off. Eric Sawyer says, bottle pop and bottle kill all in one. And he gave us $5, but no, you're probably not going to kill that bourbon. But still, it's an extra whiskey tasting. Here we go. That is a lot of bourbon to kill. I got to pop this. We're going to listen. Not bad. Tolerable. The cork was dry, to be fair. Not getting much out of the neck. Keep it modest. All right. This is exciting. I won't say, I'll say this a little later. I'll say it later. Say what? I'll wait until after you taste it. Here we go. Mictors. Well, I'll keep this front and center for you guys. Sorry about that. So this is this year's toasted barrel strength rye. And the let's go specs on this. So it's Kentucky rye. We know Michter's, uh, like this is a source product from where we don't know, uh, probably Heaven Hill. It is 108 proof, so 54% alcohol, which is in my money zone. Dude, Liberty Not License is giving me crap. What's that? Pouring for a mouse? Dude, I have tasted like eight whiskeys so far. I had Eagle Rare early times. Uh, and then I had, oh, well, actually, I started with Four Roses and Elijah Craig. So Eagle Rare early times, Four Roses, Elijah Craig. I've had 10 different whiskeys. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, plus the Middle West. So this 11, this is number 12. Okay. I'm going to have to eat a cheeseburger after this. That uh, okay. sounds good, actually. It does. It does sound good. All right. I got to reset. Let me focus, guys. This is an important whiskey. Kudos to you all coming through, getting this bottle popped. Being dank, yeah. (laughs) 
not I'm not getting the big nose on this. What's the proof on this bottle? 108. I mean it smells good. It's a nice a nice blend of uh AG spice and herbaceousness. You know, uh by herbaceousness I mean things that are generally green. So all spices like the it's the the nutty, you know, like a spice, like black pepper, nutmeg, uh, clove, allspice, PSL, uh, <laughs> that PSL. kind of stuff. Yeah. Whereas uh, when I say herbaceous, I mean things like dill and parsley and sage, oregano, herbs. And this is a nice blend of those. In here and he says the let it breathe. Re let it breathe review needs to happen the contrast help define the experience tonight is just a trial run i would actually be curious so when you all pour your pours how long do you uh let it breathe before you get into it i'd be curious to know i uh i'll wait for some answers before i chime in with my own opinion again obviously uh might be different for the show Maybe not, but I would be curious to know what uh, whether you let it breathe or you go into it, or if you do, what uh, for you know for how long. This is a really interesting blend of those herbaceous, -y, specifically dill, and a little mint, and then candy like candy stuff like laffy ta strawberry laffy taffy. So I'm getting fruits and herbs. Like, there's a lot going on on this nose. And now it's coming out. Like, I'm getting it more. I poured it. It's been a second. But all kinds of different stuff. A little bit of a, like, mashy. Not grainy, but like that, you know, mash, to, mash, mash, whatever. Whatever the big thing that holds mash is called. Get some of that. Uh, you walk into a distillery and you whiff. Oh, that is fermenty. Some of that in there with the fruit and some dried fruits in there. Edward in the in the chat pre plans his pours. He uh he's saying he rests his pours for 48 hours. So this is uh we're talking about a serious <laughs> planner. Here. Dude, let's go. Yeah, that may over overly oxidize. I assume you put a lid on that sucker. Um 48 hours. Wow, this guy is serious. That is a, a whiskey geek if I ever heard one. All right. <laughs> let's uh get into it i mean plenty of oak guys i mean it's it is rich um doesn't smell like overly oaked it doesn't smell like elijah craig toasted when you pour that or the mictor's toasted bourbon which to me was only oak that's like all i pulled out of that You ever swallow wrong? <coughs> and it burns. In the um <coughs> this normally happens at the cupping table at Quills, and we normally make some sort of vape joke at this point. Like so I will not the vape. I will regularly when I'm tasting coffee. Because when you, you're tasting coffee, you slurp. <laughs> you aerate the coffee, you 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 spread that all over your, your palate. And I will regularly spread it all over my lungs and then cough like a madman. <laughs> <clears throat> um, so my first reaction was, wow, that there's a lot there. So let me get back to it. Uh, it was hot. I mean, granted, it hit me in the wrong part of my um, mucous membranes up there that added to the heat. So, the toasted barrel, the, the presence of the oak is reminiscent of the Michter's toasted barrel bourbon. A couple different things, though. That hits me up front. Oh, there's a lot of oak here. But then it explodes in spicy. All the, the spice and herbaceous stuff I picked up on the nose hits me right after that oak. And the proof really, really, really helps here is that Michter's uh, toasted barrel bourbon, not barrel strength. I really think you could have benefited from proof to give it some added spice to kind of help cut through the heavy, heavy oak. This has heavy oak, 
but then it's balanced out by the proof and the spice. That's all I have right now. I'll, I'll hit you with more in a minute, but there you go. Yeah. I will personally say I've never been an enormous fan of the mixtures toasted rye, even though I know a lot of people have. Hmm. Um, last year's or like the 2020 barrel strength rye, I was really impressed with. Oh, the standard Our, barrel strength. Yeah, which I have a more than the toasted. I mean, again, it, I I would I would have said if somebody told me I I drank it and someone said that's Thomas H Handy, I would say, wow, it's good. Like th I mean, that level, it just I mean, it had some oak to it. It just was a really good solid rye. Um, the toasted for me is I don't know. It's it's fine. It just doesn't. For me, hmm. it doesn't really do it for me. But so I know people are wild about it. Yeah, so I got somebody else, a uh, uh, friend of mine. I won't drop his name. I don't know if he would want me to drop his name. Good guy, though. Um, he's like, yeah, you know, I'm like, whatever. I I actually, I'm really liking this um, because I get layers. I like whiskeys that have layers. And so this one delivers that oak layer, and then I get um, spice. And the finish is like herbaceous, minty. You know, I get um, uh, parsley and mint on the finish with uh, heavy sweetness. Like the oak is still hanging around, but it didn't take over. It's not the whole party. So it's like a well, well aged rye, like very well aged rye where the oak is kind of playing first fiddle. But then the second fiddle is also like it's a really good fiddle player. <laughs> the person playing second fiddle is doing a really good job, uh, bringing balance to that overall uh, orchestra. It's playing a pretty rad harmony. So, uh, you know, of course, it's a it, it's a rare whiskey. It's hard to come by. I'm trying not to let that influence my perception. But I tried to like Mictor's toasted bourbon, and I could not. Um, this I, I enjoy at a much higher level. I will say it's either like 15 or 16, 2015 or 2016, I should say. And the the toasted was was a little bit better, a little bit more like tropical, kind of interesting. But mm -hmm. yeah, I agree. The I don't remember what the last year was that I had it. Maybe it was 2019, but not not a super big fan of it as well. I okay. do like what a downer. Strings, though. Both no no I I mean <laughs> just being transparent I like the the barrel strength bourbon I like the barrel strength rye um, more so than the toasted maybe I'm just not a fan of the toasted I don't know I'm not maybe not I'm not trying I mean, to toasted products to know yeah I mean I have to be in the mood for Elijah Craig toasted but then I like it if I'm in the mood for it I really like it um, but I don't I'm not a big fan of the wood for double oak like it's just heavy oak is just like drying and it takes over so you got to bring balance to it um yeah anyway i won't bemoan this my dad really really likes the barrel strength mictors i was able to buy three of them out of a liquor store in wichita falls texas gave him one i drank one and this is all i have left of the other one so i'm kind of like nursing this one saving it for his next visit so this will be a fun side by side um Hopefully, yeah, I know they're going to come up in September, my parents, uh, but with the baby in March, my mom will be here in April. We'll see when dad comes, but it'll be good times regardless. All right. Uh, any other questions, things uh, out of the chat y'all want to see before we sign off here? Uh, plenty of, plenty of, of noise, and by noise, I mean the winsome dialogue of many whiskey geeks contributing to the positive growth of our society <laughs> but a lot of that in the chat tonight uh kyle ramage says mictor sourcing yes they source they also distill now but they also source i was under the impression that um the uh the 25, I got a chance to try the 25 last year. I am <laughs> sure ground foreman going really? back. Just based on the profile? Absolutely. 
Um, 20, I'm not sure. The 25 was like a more refined King of Kentucky to me, which again, Brown Foreman. So, I mean, I'm sure they've got stuff from wherever. I don't get a chance to try. I mean, now, I mean, aren't we tasting their own distillate now? Not in these likely. bottles? I would say probably not in these. Really? Like, they haven't, when mm-hmm. did they start distilling? Just like, yeah, I mean, it's been within the last four years. Well, they got the two facilities, though. I thought maybe they were. I thought maybe they were doing distilling at the other facility before they started doing the on-site stuff at Fort Nelson. We're going to have to fact check this. <laughs> I'm more fact checking myself. Like I actually don't know. I, I have no idea um, what their own stuff is. I, yeah, I have no idea. Can't say. So if anybody knows, you guys are a leg up on us right now. Great question. If we end up having our, uh, my uh my buddy from Mictor's on JD but, says uh, that he can't tell us that yeah maybe maybe not uh JD says we currently have seven patrons for the entry proof podcast on Patreon nation you guys rock with that we're gonna go ahead and uh sign it off you guys have been dank uh thanks a lot for the super chats uh those of you who have gone ahead and signed up for the Patreon. You can check that out. Check out our tiers. We're going to try and make it worth your while, squad. Get you some cool stuff. So that's patreon.com slash entryproofpodcast. And you should check out entryproofpodcast.com. We now have two episodes up. One with um, Danny Calloway from Bardstown Bourbon Company and the other one where Brian and I break down four rows of single barrels. This was a fun uh, live stream tonight for sure. Uh, next week, we don't know what we're going to be doing on Thursday, but hopefully recording another. Yes, is going to be a banger, which uh, you know. Which, I- yes, I, we should tease. For the people watching this video, they deserve to know what the next episode is. Yeah, I mean, it's know. a very Purple Top podcast. Purple Top. <laughs> So, yeah, you can tell them. You can tell them what it is. It's not like we haven't recorded it. You say tease. I don't. I assume it's a tease, not a tell No, I mean, you can tell uh, them. We're not going to tell them everything on the podcast. Uh, so, uh, Josh is going to be on the podcast. He just happens to uh, have a history in whiskey and does work for Willet Distillery. And uh, he, uh, among other things is the the head of their single barrel program and so we talked to him a little bit about uh single barrel selection and um some palette questions i believe and and profiles mm-hmm. it's a good chat it was a good chat i'm excited about it yeah it's really a podcast about picking single barrels at willet which is pretty dank <laughs> and then we right. we taste some some of the uh family estate single barrel bourbons, uh, the will it distilled stuff, which is pretty awesome. So that will be a great episode. That's probably going to go live. What next Thursday, Brian? Yeah. Yeah. And That's my, we'll- I, I need, I need to touch up some of that. And I, uh, I want to make sure it has the, the seal approval from, um, you know, team, uh, like team Swan Willett. Crest, if you will. Yeah. It's probably wise, probably wise. It was pretty safe. Pretty safe content, um, but pretty awesome at the same time. All right. Well, that is going to do it from us, everybody. Hope you enjoyed. Um, hope you have a good rest of your night, wherever you're at. If you're on the East Coast, you probably should go to bed because you got work too. That's what I'm going to do. Sure. The rest of you, stay healthy, stay safe, and remember to keep it neat. We'll see you all later. All right. Cheers, guys. <laughs>